Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to United Methodist Church of Hornell. Now, the CDC says if you've had your shot, you can remove your mask. So if you feel comfortable as you're seated, you can remove your mask. If you feel comfortable. If you feel safe and comfortable, please remove your mask. Of course, our fearless governor says we still have to wear it. So, yeah. So I just want to let you know, if you feel comfortable, you can remove it as you're seated. It's, uh, it's kind of more easy to breathe and when you're sitting, and, and so I'll uh, just let you know on that. Uh, any announcements this morning? Youth is meeting after Sunday school today. Any other announcements? We'd like to remind everyone that next week is uh, Pentecost. Pentecost, that's and, right. And we're we would like everyone to wear something red, if you have it at home, something red. And then um, we will ask for red geranium plants to be brought by May 23rd to be in the outdoor planter for Memorial Day. And I think Dave's going to wear a Santa Claus suit next week. Sure. <laughs> it's red, right? <laughs> Is there any other announcements this morning? Uh, Prayer Partners is meeting on Tuesday uh, of this week on the 18th. It's kind of off of its regular schedule, but at, on Tuesday at 2 o'clock, we'll meet right in the uh, adult lounge there. And er it's open to everybody. We're finishing, sort of fin winding down on a study. He chose the nails. Uh, by Max Licato. Um, it's a um, you know, good study, good discussion, and we pray for the whole, uh, go round to the rooms and pray for the whole church. So if you'd like to join us, then please do, 2 o'clock on Tuesday, uh, the 18th. Is there any other announcements, Martin? I want to thank Samantha for last week for doing her service uh, for it. We want to thank her for that as well. She's got to take some more courses, though, because according to the conference, she's supposed to be taking more courses. Just give me a heads up, Samantha. <laughs> Any other announcements? Any joys or concerns this morning? I think that's Pam over there, and she should be up out of her seat and joyously praising the fact that her husband uh, graduated from Northeastern Seminary yesterday and with his master's in divinity. Yes, yeah, so hallelujah, Edwin Jakeway. Uh, my other joy and concern is um, t uh, somehow I am the mother today of a 40-year-old girl named Jessica. How did that happen? <laughs> They grow up fast, believe it or not. <laughs> so, anyways, my joy. Any more joys or concerns? Got one over here, Samantha. Prayers for my friend Mary, who passed away this week, and her family. Mary passed away with COVID. Jennifer was just back home and doing well. And so uh, Marie is at home too. Very good. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the joys that you have shared with us today. We ask, Lord, to continue prayers for the ones that need it. We ask that you just guide us, Lord, as we continue to be the way we are today with this distancing and everything else and um, help us to get back to a normal life. Lord, we just ask that you just be with each and every person here today. We thank you for them as well. In Jesus' name, amen.
Stand if you're able or in spirit and join me in the call to worship. God of love, your constant love extends toward the heavens and yet faithfulness reaches the clouds. Your constant love provides shelter and protection. I mean, you some prayer. Ever living God, your eternal Christ, once dwelt on earth, confined by time and space. Give us faith to discern in every time and place and presence among us of Him who is head of over all things and fills all. Even Jesus Christ has ascended. Join us in the opening hymn. Children's time. Have you ever been with someone that was lost? They didn't know where they were going? Maybe you're taking a walk and you weren't sure where you're going. 
Maybe mom or dad's GPS stopped working or didn't use the map. Okay, and sometimes, <laughs> I see Harmony, she's like, mm-hmm. Okay, sometimes people try to fix it, right? They ask for directions, or they pull over, they try to figure out what's going on. Okay? That's, that's what Haley did on the way to the museum, okay? And some people, they don't want to ask for directions. Okay? All right, so I want to talk to you guys about some lost people today. Right? <laughs> There's a lot of people that are lost. Okay, and I want to talk to you guys about affirming your loving God. So can you guys close your eyes for me? Close your eyes. All right, when your eyes are closed, can you feel God in your heart? Okay? A lot of times it's those those good feelings, the feelings of, of rightness. Sometimes it's warmth, okay? Sometimes it's just feeling better, okay? Those good things, those good things, that's God in your heart, okay? That's God trying to show you. Trying to show you that he's there with you, making you feel him. Lon, are you paying attention? Okay, can you believe there's some people who don't want to feel that? Can you believe that? There's some people that just don't want to feel God in them. Okay, we're going to refer to them as the lost people. All right, so, I know, so I was, I was actually writing in this. Okay, it's my word search. That's what I do when I'm bored or trying to think or trying to concentrate. Yep. So I was doing this a couple weeks ago. All right. I want to see on the front. Bible finder words. So that leaves you to believe that it's about what? The Bible and words. Okay. So it would make sense that when we look in here, the words that I'm supposed to find are in the Bible, right? All right, so Harmony and Holden, you guys are pretty good readers. Come here a second. Look at some of these words that my word search told me to find that should be in the Bible. Is there anything that seems off? Dragons. Dragons. Unicorns. And unicorns. I was like, huh, this could have made church a lot more interesting when I was a kid. <laughs> talking about dragons and unicorns. So that seemed really crazy, right? Do you guys, do you guys remember like reading the Bible and hearing about dragons and unicorns? So Holden remembers, of course he does. All right, so I was like, okay, this seems really crazy. So I pulled out my Bible. Actually, I pulled out Callie's Bible because that was the closest. And I opened up to the chapter and I read the chapter and I didn't read anything about it. So I was like, hmm. So I... So I got on Google and I start reading, okay? And there's some people on Google, there's some of these lost people who seen this and I realized that this was a Bible that I didn't have, um, but who saw this kind of thing and they pretty much said that our Bible was about as true as Harry Potter, okay? And, you know, and that's not real, right? Yes, Kelly likes Harry Potter. All right, but you want to know what I realized? Okay, that these, these people, they thought that because they were lost and they didn't want to ask for direction. Okay, they, they had pride. Okay. They believed so much that they knew what was going on that they didn't want to search for anything more. Okay, so when I kept searching, I know they found out. Okay, that this animal's gone extinct, but there used to be this big rhino with a huge horn. With the, the huge, horn. A huge horn off his nose. What does that sound like? One, you get down to one. Uno means one. So unicorn, 
Uno a corn means one horn, right? Do you think maybe they could have been thinking about this? Do you, do you think maybe there was an explanation for why there could be unicorns in the Bible? Yeah, because... That rhinoceros. Okay? But these people didn't want... They had pride. Okay? And... <laughs> And pride's not always a bad thing, all right? Everybody has pride, but too much pride's when we get worried. So like, I feel pride, okay? I feel pride in my kids when Lana hit the softball in her game, and when Holden jumped up like five reading levels in a semester, and when Callie was in the school play, sorry, six, and when, <laughs> Well, Mira's Mira. She, she's hard not to feel pride about. She talked in front of her teacher. Yep, I feel proud of her when she talked in front of her teacher. So it's okay to have pride, but we have to make sure we're not having too much pride. Okay? You've got to understand that it's okay. Because if those lost people ask for directions, do you think they'd still be as lost? No? No? You think they might be able to be found? Yeah. All right. Do you want to go find ourselves at Children's Church? Go forward, Spirit, and join us in the next hymn.
Heavenly Father, we just praise you on this day. You have given us the opportunity to worship in our church. You've kept us safe. You've supported us all through this. And we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Good morning. The first lesson is Psalm 47. And the heading is, To the Chief Musician, a Psalm of the Sons of Korah. Oh, clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout to God with a voice of triumph. For the Lord Most High is awesome. He is a great king over all the earth. He will subdue the peoples under us and the nations under our feet. He will choose our inheritance for us, the excellence of Jacob, whom he loves. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our king, sing praises. For God is the king of all the earth. Sing praises with understanding. God reigns over the nations. God sits on his holy throne. The princes of the people have gathered together. The people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong to God. He is greatly exalted. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is from Acts, first chapter, 1 through 11. The former account I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up after he threw, <clears throat> after he threw the Holy Spirit had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs, being seen by them during 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, Jesus commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem but to wait for the promise of the Father, which, Jesus said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, it is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. <clears throat> now when Jesus had spoken these things while they watched, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Carol. And for you latecomers that came in, um, if you feel comfortable, uh, you can remove your mask when you're seated.
He's ascended into heaven. Familiar words, right? Familiar words. Churches are repeating them from for centuries. They have been repeating those words. And we've been repeating them in the Apostle Creed. A lot of you have memorized the Apostle Creed when you were younger. I failed to do that. So I'm going to leave, read a little bit of it for you. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Ghost. Now, Holy Ghost is maybe unfamiliar with some of you younger people, but that's how we used to refer to the Holy Spirit, was the Holy Ghost. Born of a Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. Then the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into the heavens and he seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. He has ascended. Some of you remember the old Superman movies, or programs where up, up, and away. Remember those? Up, up, and away. That's kind of what it was like with Jesus when the disciples were standing there, up, up, and away. It must have been a very strange sensation for, for those on that hillside because of what they have seen. So what is this? Is this a magic show? Jesus suddenly levitating above them, disappearing into the cloud. Hmm. What is the trick? Was David Copperfield there someplace? Okay, you can bring him back now. Away. Anyway, we have work to do here on earth. The kingdom is established. Besides, we, do, we were not done talking. This is what the disciples are probably saying in their minds. What did he mean? John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And what was that about? You will receive the power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, Samaria in, in the ends of the earth. Now, I don't know if any of you have ever felt the Holy Spirit in your bodies. But I remember way back in 19... in the 90s, I don't remember exactly what year. But I went to walk to Emmaus. And we had a prayer night. And a group of men laid their hands upon me. And I felt the Holy Spirit. Believe me, I felt him. Because my knees just buckled. And I just felt every release that I had in the past just released from me. The power of the Holy Spirit. So I don't know if any of you have felt that situation, but I have. Now, I can just hear the disciples at this moment. Come back, Jesus. The show is over. Come back. Jesus, come back. But he was gone. He was gone. One might figure that the, our friends would be depressed at Jesus' disappearance. After all, they had been quite an emotional roller coaster. They were good times traveling through the countryside for three years. In bad times of trial and torture at the end that ended at Calvary. The good times together once more following the resurrection now. 
Now he's gone again. I could just imagine how the disciples must have felt. Who could blame them for being sad that Jesus was gone? The record says a cloud hid him from their sight. The same cloud led the children of Israel in the wilderness. Do you remember those stories where they were wandering through the wilderness and, and there was a cloud that led them along the journey? If you dig into it, Jesus was in that cloud leading them along. The Jews had long looked at clouds as a symbolic of the presence of God. Perhaps that is why instead of dismay and depression, in other biblical accounts of the accession in Luke gospel, Luke's gospel, verses chapter 24, verses 51 through 53, we find the disciples returning to Jerusalem with great joy. Somehow they understood that Jesus had simply gone home. He had stated over and over again that this was the plan. You can find that in John 14, verse 2 and verse 12. And you can find that in John 16, verse 5. And you can find that in John 28, I'm sorry, verse 28, in John 20, verse 17. This was not a goodbye. But rather, see you later. See you later. He had said, in my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If I were not so, if it was not so, I would have told you. And I will go prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will take you to my side so that where I am, there you may be also. That's in John 14, verses 2 and 3. This was not the end of the relationship with Jesus. But a band of new believers, new, new believers, a new beginning. Not a, not a curse for despair, but a case of delight. In a unique way, their Lord and Savior was not law was not less accessible, but more accessible. No longer would he be limited by space and time. But now, he would be available everywhere, anytime. By the presence of the Holy Spirit. I read a story about a teacher, the first graders, who said that they were asking the children, who was the most famous person, a live famous person in their life, living? And of course, some people named different people like President Obama, uh, Oprah Winfrey, um, there's a lot of different ones they named. And one little boy in the back, he said, Jesus Christ. 
And the teacher says, well, that's good. He says, but, the teacher says, but, I said, who is alive? And Jesus is dead. And the little boy, he says, no. Jesus is next to me right now. He's in my heart. He's alive today. The teacher couldn't disagree with him. But you're talking a first grader telling a teacher that Jesus was in his heart and he was alive. You gotta give those parents some credit, don't you? For raising their child that way. So within just days and weeks, that pitiful band of believers which had hidden itself behind locked doors in fear of their life, stood boldly in the public arena and proclaimed the gospel of the crucified and risen Christ. Just like that little boy. He boldly said that Jesus was alive and living in his heart. It sped, spread beyond Jerusalem just as Jesus said into Judea and Samaria and on the ends of the earth. What a difference in the disciples. What a difference. First they were hidden. They were hiding in the upper room because they were afraid of their lives. And then the Holy Spirit came upon them. And they were preaching boldly in the public arenas, proclaiming Jesus, the gospel. Jesus is alive. It gave rise to the first confession of the faith of the church ever had. Jesus Christ is Lord. It is, it is flashed out, fleshed out by the church's repeat, repeat from week to week. He is ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. Glory to God. The point of the whole matter, of course, is a, a reminder of who Jesus is. Not simply some ancient traveling rabbi who taught timeless truths not simply some helpful Hebrew, Hebrew healer who has remarkable power over disease and even death. Not simply a compassionate, compassionate, caring friend who reached out to those whom society rejected. But rather the God of all creation come to earth incarnate in flesh, human flesh. <clears throat> now it was time for his return to glory. The early scribes who blessed with divine wisdom completed the Lord's prayer. For oral, for reciting it. We all know this. He completed the Lord's Prayer with this phrase that we all know. For thy is the kingdom and the power and the glory. knew what he was doing when he put that phrase in there. In this song we just sang, Amazing Grace. 
the composer who, who wrote that, and composed the music. Every time I hear it, it touches my heart. That Jesus can save somebody like me. His amazing grace. It was a perfect touch to the Lord's Prayer. For thy is the kingdom and the power and the glory. The scribes knew from the depths of their being that Jesus ascended into heaven, sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. He deserved it. True, he wrote no books, composed no songs, drew no pictures, carved no statues, amused no fortune, commanded no army, ruled no nation. Yet, he was never wrote a line has been made the hero of unnumbered volumes. He who never wrote a song has put music into your hearts of this nameless multitudes. He who never established an institution is a foundation of the church that bears his name. He refused the kingdom of this world and has become the Lord of millions. Yes, he whose shameful death barely produced a ripple on the pool of history in his day has become a mighty current in vast ocean centuries since his death. There is something utterly unique with this king. Instead of being draped with all the trappings of all the powerful leaders as he deserves, he reigns as a suffering servant. Our sovereign Lord is revealed in one who walked in dusty roads of Palestine who has no place to lay his head, who emptied himself in obedience all the way to the cross. That was not the end of the story, of course. Hallelujah! Amen! He who died to be our Savior now lives to be our Lord. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Then it will make a difference in the way you live because what we believe determines on how we behave. How do we behave in honoring such a cosmic king of Christ as Christ? A good start is by taking his instructions seriously. If you want a quick primer of acceptable behavior, take the fast trip through the Sermon of the Mount on the Mount. Angry words, insulting words are out. Our sexual behavior will be in control. We will be honest in our, our business dealings. We will go above and beyond the call of duty to respond in appeal for help. We will care for the welfare of not only our neighbors but our enemies as well. We will be religious but not showy about it. Possessions will have their rightful place in our lives. Not to be all in the end of all existence. 
We will not be judgmental. Are we judgmental as humans? Are we? We're all judgmental. I don't care who you are. You are judgmental on something in your life. There is something in your life that you are judgmental about. We need to be not, we don't need to be judgmental. But we will use good judgment. We will trust God to meet our needs. Of course, our gospel have lots more for us. But those should do to get us started. <clears throat> Sometimes we take the Bible in such great amount that we don't understand it. So if we start small and work our way through, we will understand it more clearly. More clearly. Is Jesus Christ your Lord? Good. Then if you do do your level best to do what he says, piece of cake, right? Piece of cake, right? We can do what's best, right? It's a piece of cake. Of course not. It's not a piece of cake. It's hard. As human beings, it's hard. We have to take it slow. It is hard. But we have the promise of his abiding presence to help us on our way. On this way and on this journey that we are taking with Jesus Christ. This is, after all, our living Lord. Take it from the first grader. He is our living Lord. He is living in our heart. Every day he is beside us, walking with us, taking care of us. But sometimes we overlook it. We want to do things on our own all the time. We want to do things on our own. Just the other day, my wife was looking for a picture of her brother. And she could not find it anywhere. She took a moment and she said, Lord, help me find this picture. And you know, the next thing she did, she found the picture just like that. Because she handed it over to the Lord. And the Lord gave her the idea where it is and she found it. So now she has it. This is, after all, our living Lord. The same one who ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, Father Almighty. This is the one who is ultimately in charge. He is ultimately in charge of us. And that is my friend. It is a wonderful word of hope that Jesus can be our friend. He can be our friend for you and me or anyone who ever has been drenched in the storms of life. It is a word of hope for this old world that says the wrong shall fail the right shall prevail. Jesus is our Lord. He has ascended into heaven. And he is sitting at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. Do we trust him? Is he our Lord? Are you willing to follow his instructions? Because he said, I'm not gone. I'll just see you later. 
I'll see you later. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just ask that you be with each and every one of us today. That you will give us the strength to follow your instructions. To be with each and every person here today. Help us to take your word slowly. Help us to understand every word. And we ask this in your glorious and precious name. Amen. Please join us in the closing hymn, which is on the screen. Open your eyes of my heart. to share Jesus because he is our Lord. He is sitting at the right hand of our God and our Almighty. 
Go in peace, the love of Christ in your hearts. Amen.